It is electric in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Chrysler Center with the Big Ten regular season title and all of its possible outcomes at hand here. Indiana's going for the outright title with a victory here today. And there's their starting five. Michigan to gain a piece of the regular season title in the conference with a victory here at home where it has not lost this year. Undefeated 17-0 at home. Mike Kitts, Pat Driscoll, Boborowski, the officials for this important Big Ten regular season final finale for each team. Jim Nance, Mark Kellogg, courtside here at the Chrysler Center. And the tip goes to Indiana. Good to be with you, Clark Kellogg, for this big game. Terrific to be courtside, and this is what these kids work for and play towards an opportunity for a Big Ten regular season title. Hits the three. He's the best in the Big Ten. Three point land, almost 50%. He banks home the shot to open the game. Jim, I saw a tenacity and a focus in last night's practice for Indiana that leads me to believe that this team will come out with tremendous poise. And it's all about playing through Zeller and knocking down shots. Ola Depot got the rebound at the other end. Now feeds it to Zeller, who misses the short shot for that rebound. It's Morgan for Michigan, and down goes Burke on the drive, and he's fouled. Not only do we have the Big Ten regular season, will it all belong to Indiana, or Michigan gain a piece of it, and therefore bringing in Ohio State as well. You've got Big Ten Player of the Year on the line here today between this man at the line and Ola Depot for Indiana. That's the way everyone sees it. No question about that, Jim. I think these are the two leading candidates for player of the year in the conference, and perhaps the performance in this game may tilt the vote one way or another. And Burke off the feral foul. This is the first, but again, an outright title to Indiana with a victory here today. It'll be the first in 20 years. Meanwhile, if Michigan wins this game, we'll gain a share of a second straight Big Ten regular season title. You also saw in this fine print, Michigan would earn a three seed of buy in the first round of the Big Ten tournament if they win. If they lose, could drop to the five seed in next week's Big Ten, Big Ten tournament. Ohio State already won today, so they will be the two in Chicago next week. Zeller missing on the fadeaway. And it's Burke being pushed outside now, trying to get past Farrell. And that shot influenced by Zeller. Indiana off and running. and try to quick hit attack. Hardaway misses the three. Balls up ahead. Zeller feeds it. Oh, on the depot on the other side. Oh, beautiful attack that time. Zeller in the middle of it. But again, both of these teams really good at pushing the ball in transition after misses particularly. Michigan really needs to idle down. They've got to run through some sets here and calm themselves down, Jim. They are really trying to play too fast right now. As we take a look at Indiana, taking full advantage of an opportunity in transition. Zeller showing you his ability, not just to finish, but to set up a teammate there as you look at Tom Crean, who's done a remarkable job in turning this Indiana program around. His team has been ranked number one in the nation 10 total weeks this season. Come into this week, ranked number two. Earlier week lost to Ohio State. Indiana again, already assured of at least a share of the Big Ten regular season title, trying to win the whole thing outright today. Two on the shot clock. And already have the number one seed in next week's tournament, and already Michigan way out of character, Jim. Oladipo. Doubled up. And the tie-up is going the other way. Terrific hustle here by the Maize in blue. They hem up Oladipo in the corner, do so without fouling. And then just continue to track the ball and force the turnover. But this is where they've got to slow down, Jim. It's fine to be aggressive and active and excited defensively. Offensively, you've got to idle it down. Set screen, move the ball, and
and don't settle for the first quick perimeter shot. And that's the first field goal of the game for Michigan. Hardaway Jr. You see Creighton and Wichita State with a minute and a half to go, and that one's tightening. Hall with a second three in this game. Jordan Hall is a three-point basket. Jim, this team, Indiana, in his last three games has only shot 40% from the field. They average 81 points a game. They shoot 49% on the season. That was one of the things Tom Green told us yesterday. We just need to do us and make shots. If we do, we'll be in good shape. And so far, so good early. Up ahead to Holmes. This is one of the plays I don't like in college basketball, and I don't think Holes got there in time anyway. But I think it should almost automatically be a block when a defender goes back in transition and tries to take a charge. Beeline talks to Burke. As Albrecht comes on to the floor, as we near that first under-16 timeout, and Barrel squeezes in the tough shot. Beeline was talking to Burke about slowing it down a little bit. This team really takes Burke's lead in his demeanor and his production, and he's been a little bit too antsy here at the start of this ballgame. Albrecht driving underneath, now outside, and the three-point shot by Robinson the third. As last touch by Indiana, we've got our first break. Out to a 10-3 start. The holes knocking down a couple of threes. His computer crashed. She accidentally deleted a major presentation. His mom erased all his music. He lost his laptop and all his financial records. A virus wiped out their family photos. Why are they so happy? Because they have Crash Plan's worry-free backup. With Crash Plan, all your files are continuously backed up and protected and can be recovered fast, anytime, from any device. It's easy, and you can try it for free. Get started. For worry-free backup, go to TryCrashPlan.com. We know you love Big Ten sports so much Who ordered the tall? that you want to take them with you. Excuse me? Really? Now you can. With BTN to go, it's the Big Ten network on your phone, tablet, or computer. BTN to go. Take it with you. Before the ball goes on, expand your basketball knowledge as our experts discuss the matchups to watch, interview coaches and players, and set the scene for a spectacular day of hoops. The Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show, Thursday on BTN. Watch all-access video and purchase official IU souvenirs and apparel by visiting the Indiana University Athletics official online store at iuhoosiers.com. Part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Here it's Indiana 10 and Michigan 3. Friends, Jim Nance, Clark Kellogg, you're all ramped up oh, and you yeah, promised this is going to be a track meet, you said. Boy, you weren't kidding. Playing on rollerblades downhill. Yeah, and Michigan deal. has been overhyped. They've yeah. been too excited. The moment, the first four, too big for this young team trying to play for a share of the Big Ten title. Indiana, you saw it in the execution of Indiana early. More mature, more settled, more focused. Part of that is being on the road. You bring an edge that you can't manufacture when you're at home. Michigan at home has been superb over the last two years. Having lost only once, 32-1. and one. Lost on senior night a year ago to Purdue. Meanwhile, this is again senior day for the Michigan Wolverines. Had a wonderful ceremony before the game. Those are always special, but they also tend to take a little emotional juice out of the home team in my estimation, Jim. Tipped out, and Watford touched it last. Nice move here by John Beeline to sit Trey Burke down. He is going to return now, but sometimes you can idle a player down by pulling him out of the game, let him exhale, observe momentarily, and hopefully Trey Burke will come back with a little more settledness to his game. Yeah, he throws it in. This Michigan team, one out of nine from the field. And ball slips out of the hands. Here comes Oladipo off the hip, and he is rejected. 
Hardaway Jr. to Morgan at the top. Some play by Hardaway. And maybe that'll get Michigan going. There's a foul call on Morgan. Excellent work here by Tim Hardaway Jr. to not give up on the play. The fact that Burke underran Oladipo gave him time to make that block. And then at the end of it, here comes Jordan Morgan for the throwdown. Again, both of these teams just look to run at every opportunity, Jim. So Morgan sits down. McGarry comes in for the first time for Michigan. Out of bounds, ball back in, and it stays with Indiana. Jim McGarry had a strong game in the first meeting in Bloomington. Morgan was struggling with a leg injury. Gary came in and provided a strong spark, scored 10 points and had seven rebounds in 28 minutes. La Depot underneath oh. and off the front of the rim. Tapped out, Kirk has it. Lobs it. Somehow, Robinson the third gained control of it. decision John Beeline made to take Burke out early since he's returned to the game. Two nice assists. This is a big time catch and play by Glenn Robinson the third. Terrific grab, but Burke looking for others instead of trying to go himself since he's returned from that short timeout. Brayton's going to the NCAA tournament final, winning the Missouri Valley final 68-65. Jim, that's a team that could be very dangerous. Won a tournament game a year ago. Most of the same players back. And that's McGarry on the back, making contact with Zeller. I do a lot of research on Angie's List before I do any projects on my home. At Angie's List, you'll find reviews written by people just like you. I love my contractor, and I am so thankful to Angie's List for bringing us together. Angie's List, reviews you can trust. Big Ten Men's Gymnastics, only on BTN. This is BTN. United Federal Credit Union has been serving the community since 1956. At Sterling, you will find straightforward, low-cost services without gimmicks. Our Check Plus checking offers a no minimum balance fee. That's right, no minimum balance fees on checking. You also earn interest on your checking with no monthly fees, plus fee-free ATMs all around town. Remember, when you're looking for personal, local service that's simple, visit Sterling at any of their five convenient locations or at sterlingunitedfcu.org, or call 425-0111. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration reports that head and neck injuries are the most common suffered by small children in car crashes. Chin-ups prevents the head from bobbing forward and side to side during relaxation, sleep, and travel. Now you can enjoy additional peace of mind with the added head support of Chin-ups at chinups.com. As seen on TV, order chin-ups for just $20 plus shipping at chinups.com. Chin-ups, because your child is worth it. Like I say, almost everyone's back. They got knocked out last year by Charlotte on that open, uh, in, in North Carolina by the University of North Carolina. It's in Greensboro. Yep. And Doug McDermott on the list, on the short list for the top player of the year candidates. He's been sensational all season long. Let's see if Indiana finds a way to get it inside to Zeller here. He's been a little untidy in the last few possessions. Indiana's going to be bringing in Sheehy for the first time on the next whistle. They've got Hollowell on the floor right now, number 33. Freshman from Indianapolis, and it's a drop. That's been a problem too, even in the first game, Jim. Tom told us last night, Tom Crean, that even though they controlled that game and won by eight in Bloomington, 16 turnovers was too many. 
And already four turnovers for Indiana. That's a case of Zeller not recognizing what the defense was doing there. He just assumed that he was going to have a lane and drove himself right into a turnover. Here's a three-point shot. And the freshman has it to tie the game at 10. Marzauskas. Back from 10, three down. Seven unanswered, and the Wolverines one more. Center, including the Big Ten regular season title. It'll go to the Hoosiers alone if they can win it here. Michigan shot up their Big Ten regular season championship, but they can win this game. It was a 10 3 start in this one for Indiana, and now the Wolverines with a split and a block by Bird. Paul, who has it, has hit two threes for Indiana in this game. Shea lost it on the drive. Also into the game for Indiana now, the number 12, Hunter Mascara Perea. Again, Creighton on to the NCAA tournament once again with his win over Wichita State. They certainly got tight in the end. Yes, they did. The Blue Jays won a game last year in the NCAA tournament, got knocked out by North Carolina. Doug McDermott on everybody's All-America list and clearly one of the top candidates for player of the year. The Blue Jays would be a dangerous team in the tournament. It's Hardaway, one baseline now, taking it outside. Stauskas again. He's hit a couple of threes. During the last six for Michigan. In fact, Michigan on a 10 nothing run. Station sushi. Cheap is good, and sushi, good, but cheap sushi, not so good. It's like that super low rate on not enough car insurance. Pretty sketchy. And then there are the good decisions, like e-shirts. Their coverage counselor tool helps you choose the right coverage for you at a great price, without feeling queasy. That's insurance for the modern world. E-shirts. Now back by Allstate. Click or call. Get all the news and notes from the offseason. Stay dialed in to the latest draft chatter and take an early look at what's in store for the 2013 season. The Big Ten Football Report, tomorrow on BTN. Basketball fans can't contain your excitement for the season? Then the Big Ten Digital Network is your outlet. Get extra games, exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more all on your computer. Plug into the game. Sign up now at video.btn.com. Michigan leads at 15-10, 12 unanswered for the Wolverines, primarily because of this freshman from Ontario, Nick Stauskas. He's been terrific. He's an outstanding three-point shooter. 
and Michigan able to find, get him open. Indiana lost track of him twice, and then when they crowded him, he put it right on the floor and got to the rim. Meanwhile, it's been a long dry spell for Indiana after explosive, explosively starting this game, leading 10 to three at one time, now missing the last eight shots. Depot in traffic, able to lay it up and in. <laughs> He's slippery, eel-like with his ability to find creases and crevices on his way to the hoop. First field goal in five minutes, 20 seconds for Indiana. Robinson, the third, takes off and draws the foul. here by Victor Oladipo. He navigates his way through traffic and a nice finish. And then Glenn Robinson the third, doing a nice job aggressively taking it to the hoop. And clearly, Mascara Correa not in good legal guarding position and Robinson with third with a chance for a three-point play. And it rattles in. He had a nice little head fake on Watford to begin that drive. And Completes the three-point play. Oh, Depot trying to drive once again on the floor. And the jump ball belongs to Indiana. Don't get caught waiting on the bubble. Bracket games are back and now open to join. You can create your own group or compete against the nation. CBSSports.com slash brackets. Jim, we've seen Michigan settle down here in the last few minutes after starting very, in a very hyper way. They've settled down and they've maintained the aggressiveness at both ends and it's rattled Indiana a bit. Ever since a block, a magnificent block by Hardaway created a fast break opportunity. It's been all Michigan. Albrecht gives it up. Morgan, too strong with the shot. Sheehy on the floor, tripped. Going to be a foul call against Michigan for the trip. Albrecht. Michigan foul on number two. Indiana now. Both of these teams, Jim, as we talked, they want to get up and down the floor. Michigan has idled down, and Indiana now has been a little flustered. So that being the case, as you look at Burton and Karis LeVert entering the game for Michigan. It's important that Indiana now try to get the ball inside and attack a little quicker. They've utilized a lot of the shot clock the last few possessions, and against good defensive pressure from Michigan, they've struggled to find quality shots. Talk about inside. Zeller has not scored to this point. Over two from the field. Here he is. Zeller drives in. Tap, no. Zeller still has it. Ball back lose. Stauskas over to Burke. LeBert with a three. Yogi Ferrell. They left him open. <laughs> they left him because he paused him with the hesitation dribble. That's why they left him. He slowed it up and as a result got himself all the way to the rim. Pretty stuff. Changing speeds. Robinson inside the three-point line. Back of the rim. Back out to Burke. Goes right back up with it. And look at Morgan. With three Indiana players trying to jump in there against Morgan. And the jump ball goes back to Michigan. In transition, you see Zeller to your left running the lane. And the hesitation dribbled by Farrell. We'll take another look at it from behind him this time. Burke jumps himself out of the play. And Farrell, recognizing the wide open lane, just strolls in and got the two. Max Bielfeld, number 44 on the floor for the first time for Michigan. As Burke inbounds, and that pass got away from him. Case of miscommunication, Trey Burke telling Harris Laverde was throwing it to his target hand. But 
Levert retreated with that hand, and the turnover goes the other way. This is where Indiana has to try to be better in screen setting and more intentional about getting opportunities for Zeller. Zeller's first basket of the game. Cody Zeller. Yeah, I think he can do that all game if they space the floor for him, Tim. But he's got to be, he's got to use good discretion as to when he tries to drive it and when he passes and reposts. And he's got good ball skills and can get to the rim out from out there. Hardaway, so quick. Hardaway, Junior. The Zeller, he's got Bielfeld on his back. And Bielfeld, Michigan call for the foul. Max Bielfeld. That's his first team six. And there's Cody Zeller finally able to get on the board as he's able to make a tough drive here against McGarry. And then right back at him, here comes Tim Hardaway Jr. It's going fast here, folks. If you had a choice between going bald and a full head of hair, which would you choose? Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. Yes! You wash it, you cut it. It's your own real, naturally growing hair. When it comes to hair restoration, no one in the world has more experience than Bosley. The results look completely natural and are affordable on nearly any budget. But the entire process can't be explained in 60 brief seconds. So to find out more about this clinically proven and permanent solution to hair loss, call now to receive your free no-obligation information kit. It'll answer all of your questions about hair loss and hair restoration. Plus, we'll also send you this $250 gift certificate just for calling. Every day you wait, you're losing more hair. So don't put it off any longer. You owe it to yourself to find out the facts. Choose hair. Choose Bosley. Call 1-800-575-9668. That's 1-800-575-9668. Watching Big Ten basketball add to the action with BTN Connect. See all the Twitter activity from around the conference. Get in-game stats and interact with our experts. Join your favorite team with btn.com slash connect. Get socially charged. The BTN Big Ten K is back. On July 27th, BTN brings Big Ten fans together for the summer's hottest event in Chicago. Registration officially opens Thursday, March 14th. Guarantee your spot at btnbigtenk.com. You're seeing Michigan, though, getting some ability to penetrate from other players. Exactly. Indiana is so focused on keeping Trey Burke out of the middle that they've not done a good job a couple of times on other players from Michigan. Stouskin's got to drive to the hoop. Glenn Robinson the third and Tim Hardaway Jr. So it's important for Michigan if Indiana's going to make it tough for Burke to create that other guys have when they have the opportunity to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. Six of the eight made field goals for Michigan have been in the paint. Baseline. Tough shot over Robinson the third. Ola Depot. To Hollowell. And a foul call on Michigan. Tell you what, they're allowing them, allowing them to play. Yogi Farrell came out of there and may have gotten a Michigan finger or two jam. But Michigan's defense has been very pesky and aggressive. I like the way the Michigan Wolverines are going right at Indiana and the defensive end, the defensive end in the half court. Foul was on Levert. Hollowell, the freshman for Indiana, one and one. Indiana's first free throw attempt of the game. And Ola Depot was able to get the rebound. And this one's going the other way. Terrific effort by Oladipo as he was able to reel in the missed free throw. He'd love to have this shot back because it's one he normally makes. Even though he was challenged well by Hardaway Jr. And then the over the back foul after that miss. Yeah, on Baba Well. Actually, the on the back foul, over the back is legal. Yeah, on the back is a foul. On the drive, Hardaway Jr. And the basket counts. Just what you were talking about. That's what Michigan has decided to do, Jim. Trey Burke, to his credit, is not trying to force the issue himself. Other people are getting the ball and taking it off the dribble. There you see Hardaway Jr. going strong to the right. The foul committed, I think, by Oladipo there. It was his first. So Hardaway Jr. Oh. front of the rim. Hollowell has it. For the rebound to the corner. Abel back out to Hollowell. Well, they 
they've got to get it in the Zeller against the smaller Robinson the third. Yep, they'll take it. Oh, and Horford rejects it. And looked like Indiana touched it last. And it's going to stay though with Indiana. Excellent help by John Horford. Good job by Robinson the third to keep his body in position between the basket and Zeller, and that allowed Horford to come over and lock it from the help side. Sheehy comes in for Oladipo. Boy, the activity of Michigan's defense. Active hands, tons of deflections. Doing a nice job at this end of the floor. Zeller gives it up to Howell. This is the lay-in. That's Horford doing a good job of battling for that rebound. Senior, honored before the game. Pumped him with the body. Tonight on The Amazing Race, travel to exotic Bali, where the heat is on and the surf's up. It's a new episode tonight, 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Stauskas is going to come back in. That last foul call was on Zeller, his first. As Watford back out. Along with Derek Elston, number 32, seeing action for Indiana. Well, it's been a long dry spell for Indiana, Jim, after scoring 10 points in the first three and a half, four minutes. Well, you're not kidding. They've had a tough time finding the basket. And credit Michigan's defense. The activity's been superb. All five guys have been yoked and tied together. And the aggressiveness has really unsettled in the end. Slipped through the hands of Horford. Hulls gets it to Hollowell. He traveled first. Abel didn't make a clean catch there, Jim, and as a result, called for the walk. That yeah, was really Abel here. There it is. Yep, did not cleanly catch it. Shuffled the feet before he put it on the ground. Six turnovers, although Indiana hasn't turned it over much since the early point in this one. Just not converting enough. Again, credit to the Michigan defense. Michigan turns it over fewer times than any team in the country. Under 10 a game, they squeeze the orange, and as a result, usually get good shots in the half court. That's Burke. And that's Bowles coming in. Boy, that's a tough call. He may have got a little arm, though. But he got an awful lot of the pumpkin. And Trey Burke again in a tough spot. Indiana very conscious, Jim of defending Burke and trying to keep him out of the middle as you look at Yogi Ferrell returning for Indiana. Again, two on holes. And Horford at the line with a one and one. them both. And Michigan now with an eight-point lead, its largest of the game. Give Horford a big ovation as he goes to the bench, replaced by Jordan Morgan. Well, between he, Morgan, and McGarry, they've done a nice job on Zeller. No. Defense has been stifled by Michigan. Back out to Sheehy, 10 on the shot clock. Sheehy takes it from three-point land. Pulled down by Volkrich. Tom Green not going to wait much longer when he get Zeller. Well, Burke's not going to wait any longer. His first basket from the field, and it's a big one. It's a three for the double-digit lead. And it's a 9-0 run demanding an Indiana timeout. 
Down to the Marines now, up by 11. Anticipation is rising for one of the most competitive weekends of basketball ever. Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Sean Morris tell you what to expect on the Big Ten Tournament Preview, Wednesday at 8 Eastern, only on BTN. There's always that moment in Hell's Kitchen. Who cooked the scallop? Does he love it? Does he hate it? Will a chef be sorry they were born? Who cooked them? I did, Chef. Excellent. We didn't see that coming. Hell's Kitchen, two-hour premiere this week on Fox. The inaugural Metropolitan Lacrosse Classic is coming to City Field on St. Patrick's Day, Sunday, March 17th. Catch this lacrosse doubleheader as Navy battles Holy Cross, and then Michigan takes on Colgate. Join us for all of the St. Patrick's Day festivities. Tickets are on sale now at Mets.com or by calling 718-507-TIXX. Michigan trying to gain a share of the Big Ten regular season title behind the play of Trey Burke. Well, you see Farrell going to go underneath the screen there, and that's dangerous with Trey Burke because he's got tremendous range from behind the three-point line. Take a look. He's going to go under. And you can't do that with a shooter like Trey Burke. He'll make you pay every time. A couple of significant runs, a 12-0 run by Michigan and a 9-0 run have spotted the Wolverines for this lead, but it's been the defense, Jim. Michigan's defense has been superb. Duran wrapped tight, active and aggressive, and Indiana has not responded. Critical juncture here. Indiana has to find a way to convert in the half court. This is a large, ties the largest deficit all season long for the Hoosiers. Missed its last six from the field. Inside the Ola Depot. Kicks it off the floor. This is a short shot. And it's going back to Michigan. A lot of contact taking place inside. It's a physical game, and Indiana has not responded well. Missing a number of shots, opportunities inside. Unable to convert through contact. And that's been the one criticism of Indiana. The scouting report says if you get up into them and become physical, they might not respond well, but Oladipo making a big play there on the steal and production. Yeah, picks the pocket of Burt. Oladipo breaks a three minute, 50 second drought. Two long stretches for Indiana. The second one comes to an end. Looking for help. And now Hardaway Jr. with a jumper. Watford for Indiana. Michigan doing a nice job getting back, but he's excellent at the trailing three. You've got to tag Watford because he trails the break, Jim, and steps into that three and makes about 50% of it. So five quick ones for Indiana coming out of that timeout. Stauskas, oh. tipped up, Morgan, what an effort. He hasn't been healthy all season, but he's made some strong plays today. Now Zeller working on Morgan, gets it right back. Beautiful drive that time, nice drop step. Indiana's got a rebound if they get Michigan to miss though. Got to do a better job on that defensive blast. where Indiana wants to force Trey Burke away from the middle if they can. And another turnover against Michigan. Trey Burke has turned it over a couple of times here in the last couple of minutes. They're trying to direct the Wolverines to a share of the Big Ten title. 
Before the ball goes on, expand your basketball knowledge as our experts discuss the matchups to watch, interview coaches and players, and set the scene for a spectacular day of hoops. The Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show, Thursday on BTN. Shop for tickets to Wolverines events and interact via social media at the official home of Michigan Athletics, mgoblue.com, part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Money-saving deals on amazing wheels, only at D. Patrick Honda. We're headed for another summer of high gas prices. Get behind the wheel of a new Honda at D. Patrick and start saving today. The 2013 Honda Civic and Accord have been completely redesigned. Drive a new Civic now for only $209 a month. Get a new Accord for just $239 a month. Or finance for as low as 0.9%. Plus, trading values are at an all-time high. Only at D. Patrick Honda or online at honda.dpat.com. I thought we would be safe forever, but forever isn't as long as I'd hoped. The little turret thinks Renesme is an immortal child. They're coming for us. Pax will fight. Breaking Dawn, Part 2. Order now. A little mini surge by Indiana, 7-2 to, to get it back into a six-point six difference. We're going to take a look at Zeller. Cody Zeller has been really hemmed in by this Michigan defense, conscious of where he is, bumping him a bit whenever he moves, making sure there's contact. He's only one of seven. You see George Morgan doing a nice job as we look at this action through CBS Eye Tracker, and then look at the good job of moving the feet, bodying up. That's been the story of the Michigan defense. Conscious of Zeller, getting a body on him, rotating, and then when he does get an opportunity to drive it, multiple players are coming at him, bumping him, reaching in, and just disrupting his shot attempts. Four of the starters on the position. Sitting with two fouls. And Zeller now. Spin move on Morgan. And they say he was pushed first. And they called on Morgan. His second. That was pretty close. Let's take another look at it. Morgan doing a nice job in his stands. He did get that hip underneath him, though. He did get that right thigh underneath him. So that's a good call. So with the two fouls, Morgan goes out. Horford, who has played well in spot two, he comes back in. One and one for Zeller. And Indiana still has not made a free throw. And it's Watford trying to get the second chance. Oh, a depot underneath. Boy, quick to put it right back up, too. And the deep ball almost with a double double already. He's keeping his team in it. And the Sheehy reaching in. Coming up, at and at the half. Join Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Doug Gottlieb, and Seth Davis. All the scores and highlights. Latest NCAA tournament news all coming up. at and at the half. Stauskas at the line. One and one. Stauskas, an excellent free throw shooter. And I love his swagger. This kid is outstanding as a three-point shooter, but he's got the ability to go to the basket. He's shown us that, and he's extremely confident in how he attacks defenders when he has the ball. Got banged up last Sunday here against Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Only able to play four minutes, taking a shot to the face. He came back nicely in the win at Purdue. Seller with a good effort. Goodbye, now with six points. Big respect. Big response here by Indiana, Jim. Things were starting to slip away as Michigan had momentum. This crowd was going wild. And Tom Crean called the timeout and got a quick 7-2 spurt from his charges, and now they're right back in it. On the baseline, perfect feed. Basket counts by Robinson the third, and a foul.
Boy, this is threading a needle as we look at it from above. What a pass. Not much room to get that through. Tim Hardaway Jr. connecting with Glenn Robinson III. Perfect bounce pass it was as McClymonds, another senior from Michigan, seeing first action. Well, with Jordan Morgan with the two fouls, McClymonds moves up into the rotation. They again try to take advantage of the matchup. Zeller against whoever comes in instead of Morgan. It's not complicated, Jim. You've got a player who has his ability. You've got to try to play through him. And since the pace of the game has slowed down, it's even more imperative that Indiana make sure he gets touches in the half court. It's Burke in the paint. Lost it for a moment. Triple team blocked by Zeller. Indiana coming out with it. Feet corner. Sheehy, three. Staying with Indiana. Zeller coming to life here late in the first half. He sure is, partner, starting to assert himself. Good catch and turn and face and able to beat McClymonds. That's a tough shot. And then at the other end, he also do, is doing a nice job, Jim. This is a big stretch here over the last two and a half minutes for Indiana. And a fresh 35 with now under a minute to play in the half. You gotta be going thinking Zeller again. Now whistle away from the ball. It's called on McClymonds. On the hole. Here's Zeller doing it at the defensive end. Nice challenge by a number of Hoosiers, but Zeller is the one who comes up with the block. We look at it from up top, Burke trying to force it, and Zeller just timed it perfectly there. So that's the ninth team foul on Michigan, one and one again for Indiana. And a first free throw made by the Hoosiers in this game. Earns them one more. Indiana, pretty good free throw shooting team. Actually an excellent free throw shooting team on the year, Jim, 75%. They typically have a huge advantage. They've made 253 more than the opponent. Yeah, number one in the Big Ten. Free throw percentage now one out of four, and it's going back to the World Marines. Back to the game now for Indiana is number two. Hollowell re-enters with 44 seconds. Cody Zeller had a strong surge there the last three-plus minutes. Now Indiana looking for a stop, perhaps the last shot of the half. There you see the free throw difference. Favor of the Wolverines. Compliments of aggressively taking the ball to the basket and getting into the into the penalty early. Stauskas from way outside, and it's Yogi Farrell underneath coming out with it. Should be last shot time here for Indiana. And the freshman wisely pulls back. And his last touch by Hardaway. Not only are these teams battling for Big Ten supremacy, but you've got these two players jockeying for player of the year. No question about that, Jim. Both have been splendid all year long. Victor Oladipo and Trey Burke. Oladipo's had the better of it individually here so far in this first half. Let's see what Indiana called out of this timeout. I think you've got to get it to the middle of the floor and try to get it inside to Zeller. Maybe pick and roll action. There you go. Halls with one second to go. Has to get rid of it and does. Not very good there. That's the end of the first half with the score. Michigan 33, Indiana 30. We'll get all the news and notes from the offseason. Stay dialed in to the latest draft chatter and take an early look at what's in store for the 2013 season. The Big Ten Football Report, tomorrow on BTN. Can't contain your excitement for the season? Then the Big Ten Digital Network is your outlet. Get extra games, exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more all on your computer. Plug into the game. Sign up now at video.btn.com.
We know you love Big Ten sports so much. Who ordered the tall? That you want to take them with you. Excuse me? Really? Now you can. With BTN to go, it's the Big Ten Network on your phone, tablet, or computer. BTN to go. Take it with you. Honoring legends and building leaders. It's been a Big Ten tradition for more than 100 years. We honor the legends who've given us moments we'll never forget. And building leaders? Well, that's about preparation for living a life of significance every single day. Ola Depot and Burke, their first half action. Well, Ola Depot got off to a slow start, as did Burke. But ultimately, they found their way. Actually, Ola Depot did more so than Trey Burke in that first half. Trey Burke struggled early on. John Beeline elected to take him out to let him think about it and watch it for a minute. And then he got one bucket to go, but Indiana has done a solid job of keeping Burke in front and not giving, giving him real good driving lanes to the basket. As a result, other guys have been able to put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. What a year it's been for this conference. <laughs> I mean, and then here you are today, but Ohio State's already won. If Michigan would win this game, be a guarantee of at least a three-way tie for the regular season title, and Michigan State tonight could make it a four-way tie. It's been a fantastic year for the league, and still more to come in 20 minutes, maybe more, before we decide what happens here in Ann Arbor. And again, Indiana trying to take it all alone at the top. It would be a first outright title for the Hoosiers since that Calvert Cheney-led team back in 1993. Well, Jim, Indiana found a little rhythm by playing through Zeller in the half court. He got going a little bit late. Foul trouble to Morgan. Part of that, he sat the last three minutes, did Jordan Morgan, with two fouls. Let's see how Indiana executes here on the first possession. Now, Indiana got Zeller's offense going in the last eight minutes. He scored nine points in that first half. Mm -hmm. And Watford working on Robinson, the third. Short with the shot, but right back to him. Tipped up by Zeller in. Jim, that's the 15th offensive rebound for Indiana. They didn't convert nearly as many as they should have in the first half, but if you continue to give up that many second shots, it's going to cost you. Michigan's got to do a better job on the glass. Stauskas coming off a big time screen and hits the shot. It's a two. Boy, did Morgan throw a screen for him. He sure did. Cleared out the path for him. Watford back to Zeller and fouled on the move to the basket. And the act of shooting. You can see already on the first two possessions, Jim, Indiana going right inside. Watford first and then Zeller that time. First foul on Hardaway Jr. And that's really where I think Indiana has the advantage playing through Cody Zeller. Watford is the X factor because he's a big guy that can stretch the floor, but he also can get some things done inside. Two. Wednesday on CBS, two castaways clash of the biggest conflict in Survivor history and a tribal council like you've never seen before. A new Survivor Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on America's number one network, CBS. Second one. Ties, nope, makes it a two-point game. Michigan 35-33. It was a hot start at the beginning, too, for Indiana. Mm -hmm. They were up and down, got a couple of threes in transition for the Halls or early in the offense. Got inside a couple of times, and after that, it's pretty much going to grind it out of fair. Oladipo matched up with Trey Burke right now, so that means somebody else from Michigan is going to operate with the ball. Over to Morgan. Paul was there to defend it. He blocked it. What a play. Ola Depot. Merrill tries to whip it over to Zeller, and Michigan is able to come out with it. Stauskas. Morgan, meanwhile, waits, waits, picks up the soft hook. Ola Depot swipes it away. On the wing, Holtz. And Hardaway bumps into him. What a play by Victor Oladipo. 
Got all ball is Jordan Morgan. We look at it from up top, folks, and Oladipo had his head almost on the rim to deny that one. He's doing a little bit of everything, isn't he, Jim? Yeah, the next time down the floor, how about that rebound? But he snatched so quickly and got Indiana going on a break. That led to the foul. Here is Hall with the three. And Indiana with Hall's three-point shot is up by one. His first field goal since 16.50 was left in that first half. Three threes on the afternoon for Holes. It doesn't take him long to get it launched, loaded and launched. Nick Gary beats the corner. Three points left. Yes. Robinson the third. Excellent work by Mitch McGarry. We're going to get a foul call as there was contact on Cody Zeller as he tried to get post position. But Mitch McGarry made a nice drive, draw, and ditch to Glenn Robinson the third. But a foul committed at the other end. Here you see McGarry. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, wow. That's unnecessary there. Just run back. Make sure you tag him. And that's the third foul on Mitch McGarry. And that could be costly. You know that Indiana now will look to attack that matchup by posting up Zeller. With Morgan's first half foul issues, he had two, and now McGarry with three. One reason why we saw Michigan play 12 different guys in that first half. Raise your hand if you've got savings whiplash. You know, from car insurance companies shouting, save 500 bucks over here. No, save 300 bucks over here. Wait, save 400 bucks right here. With so many places offering so much buck saving, where do you start? Well, eSurance was born online, raised by technology, and majors in efficiency. So they're actually built to save you money. And time. And whiplash. eSurance. Now back by Allstate. Click or call. Watching Big Ten basketball, add to the action with BTN Connect. See all the Twitter activity from around the conference. Get in-game stats and interact with our experts. Join your favorite team with btn.com slash connect. Get socially charged. The BTN Big Ten K is back. On July 27th, BTN brings Big Ten fans together for the summer's hottest event in Chicago. Registration officially opens Thursday, March 14th. Guarantee your spot at btnbig10k.com. Officials want to look at this contact again. They've yeah, just to make to the sure monitor. that there's no elbow. It's just a shoulder to shoulder, but totally unnecessary and clearly a foul. I mean, you just can't run back. I mean, that's I mean, that's a blade, that's a foul. I mean, it was wasn't a lot of contact, but you can't run into the path of another player and make that kind of contact and expect it to be incidental. It's a play on. They've, look, they've looked at it. They've looked at it. They've called the foul. It's the third foul on McGarry and the third team foul on Michigan. One of the interesting things, Jim, in that first half was that Indiana was losing the free throw game. This is a team that typically drums its opponents at the free throw line, and Michigan had actually won the free throw game six makes to one. That might change in the second half if Indiana is intentional about playing through Zeller and attacking the paint. Indiana makes more free throws per game than any team in the nation. Oladipo, Hardaway Jr., he stepped on the end line, going back to the Wolverines. Eighth turnover against Indiana. They have gotten it just with a toe. Oh, no, he got more than a toe. He had that with about 20 inches. You can see because Oladipo is defending Burke, Michigan electing to have Tim Hardaway Jr. handle the ball, and he's getting good pressure from Yogi Ferrell. 
Carey still on the floor with the three foul. As Burke has bounced back outside, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gives it over to McGarry. Jumper long. Zeller. Zeller's presence bigger and bigger in this game, but it is going to be called this time for the charge. Let's take a look. He's doing a nice job rim running. Oh, wow. Let's take another look from another angle. I don't like that one. He got there a tad late and slid right into him. To give the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player there. If I had, if I had a whistle. Michigan gets a break in, on that one, in my opinion. Would have been a fourth. That's right. On the Gary. Had it gone the other way. Berg shot, no, and Zeller again as the position for the rebound. Walker, Foles finds it. Slotted out by McGarry. And Burke lost it. He got tangled up with one of the officials, and it's going back to Indiana. Excellent block by McGarry. Watford never saw him. You've got to have an awareness when you catch it in the post. You can't just blindly turn and try to shoot it. Nice play by McGarry, and then Michigan gets a bad break because Burke had a chance to get possession of that ball but bumped into official Bo Borowski and lost it. But they are part of the playing, playing floor, so it's just one of those unfortunate bounces. That block was Bishop six with the game. Fast hands coming out with it. Robinson the third. Burke with Ola Depot trying to get there in time. But that's Burke hits the three. Seven for Burke. Big time shot there. Seller. Nice action on the baseline by the big man. Jim, I really think if Cody Zeller will just catch and face and take his time and survey the situation, he'll get a good shot for his team, whether it's his or somebody else's. He's just got to be aware and patient, especially with McGarry being in foul trouble. Again, Ola Depot and Burke. Going after it here to the corner. Hardaway Jr. the three for the Wolverines. And there's his father. For the Hall of Fame this year. Zeller, a seventh block, but then McGarry's going to be called for his fourth foul. Hardaway Jr. going to spray this jumper, but it's all Trey Burke created it. Splash, Michigan by six. Anticipation is rising for one of the most competitive weekends of basketball ever. Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Sean Morris tell you what to expect on the Big Ten Tournament Preview, Wednesday at 8 Eastern, only on BTN. Big Ten Men's Gymnastics, only on BTN. This is BTN. Mobile phone. You have one or you're a loser. Because without one, you can't call, tweet, text, or like anything. So protect your phone with protectyourbubble.com. If stupid stuff happens to your smartphone, we'll replace it in 24 hours. Protection from fire. Water damage! And even thieving ninjas. So protect your phone with protectyourbubble.com. Does being over 40 make you feel like half the man you used to be? Introducing Ageless Mail, a life-changing supplement for men tested to help increase testosterone levels. With over 15 million tablets sold, you owe it to yourself to find out what Ageless Mail can do for you. If you would like to experience what taking Ageless Mail can feel like, get Ageless Mail now, risk-free. Got two teams that definitely will have Atlanta on their minds, but right now they're trying to settle things here in the Big Ten. These teams are in 
including Liberty, which lost its first eight games of the year, lost 20 overall, but beats Charleston Southern to take the Big South Conference Tournament. Creighton getting through earlier today in a thriller in the Missouri Valley Final. McGarry, he's out now with the four fouls, and Morgan's back on the floor. Indiana to inbound, down six. Zeller. Short with the shot, and Robinson the third clear. He's having a nice game. He sure is, double digit scoring, 10 points, that was his fourth rebound. Taking advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. What a move by Burke, puts up the shot. Zeller forced him to adjust that shot, come up short. That's a shot Trey Burke likes and can make. subs on the floor. Sheehy and Hollowell. Underneath. Ladipo. He's got 10 points to go with nine rebounds. Indiana already assured of being the one seed next weekend in Chicago with the Big Ten Tournament. They've never been that before in the 16-year history of the Big Ten Conference Tournament. Stauskas to Burn. This time, and it's over the backboard going to Indiana. Zeller finding Oladipo here. Good execution. Nice job by Oladipo to move without the ball. You saw that Trey Burke lost track of him momentarily as he was ball dropping, and Indiana made him pay. Oladipo again down low. Left handed shot, no. Follows it up though. Gets it outside the holes. Zeller over to Hollowell and Preston banks it home. Zeller kept it alive. He sure did. He got a hand on it, Jim. And we talked about it earlier. The offensive rebounding of Indiana really has been, has really been a problem for Michigan. Those were the first points off the bench in this game for the Hoosiers. There you see the numbers, the offensive rebounding difference. That's going to be a third foul on Holmes. Good activity here by Zeller as he just gets a hand on it and keeps it alive for Hollowell, who makes a nice finish. So Holes goes out with the three, and Yogi Ferrell comes in. Talked about Indiana going for the outright. On the other side, if Michigan wins this, could be as many as four teams sharing the Big Ten regular season title right. by day's end. You got Michigan State playing against Northwestern later today. That's and correct. Again, a Michigan and a Michigan State win would make it a four-way split. But if the Wolverines lose here, you go from sharing a conference title all the way to the five seed next week in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, that's a pretty big chasm. Having to play then, in that case, you'd have to play a game on Thursday against Penn State, That's which correct. shocked them just a week ago. 
So we've talked about it an awful lot riding on this particular matchup. Big basket for Sheehy prior to that timeout. He had only made seven of his last 20 coming into this game during the last four. Hardaway, Jr., Morgan tips it up, bounds out to Farrell. Sheehy just hit a three, now looking for another one. Oladipo puts it back up quickly, contact underneath, and a foul call against Indiana, against Sheehy. Time out on the floor. If you had a choice between going bald and a full head of hair, which would you choose? Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. Yes! You wash it, you cut it. It's your own real, naturally growing hair. When it comes to hair restoration, no one in the world has more experience than Bosley. The results look completely natural and are affordable on nearly any budget. But the entire process can't be explained in 60 brief seconds. So to find out more about this clinically proven and permanent solution to hair loss, call now to receive your free no-obligation information kit. It'll answer all of your questions about hair loss and hair restoration. Plus, we'll also send you this $250 gift certificate just for calling. Every day you wait, you're losing more hair. So don't put it off any longer. You owe it to yourself to find out the facts. Choose hair. Choose Bosley. Call 1-800-575-9668. That's 1-800-575-9668. Watch All Access Video and purchase official IU souvenirs and apparel by visiting the Indiana University Athletics official online store at iuhoosiers.com. Part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Before the ball goes up, expand your basketball knowledge as our experts discuss the matchups to watch, interview coaches and players, and set the scene for a spectacular day of hoops. The Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show, Thursday on BTN. Indiana leads at 48-46, and let's take a look at the AT&T Fast Analysis. Well, one of the keys coming into the game was how would Indiana bottle up Trey Burke. They've done a nice job. Want to try to keep him out of the middle. You see Oladipo jump to the top of that ball screen. Cody Zeller there ready to help. Oladipo moving his feet, chesting up and bodying up. Good activity by Indiana. As a result, Trey Burke, just 2 of 10, he's had four turnovers but he is capable, as we've seen throughout the course of this year, of turning things quickly in terms of his impact on a game. And Zeller with 14 points, eight rebounds, and meanwhile, Oladipo has a career-high 11 rebounds. He's got a double-double, 10 points to go with it. He just overshot that last one, Jim, because he had corralled an offensive rebound and just rushed his shot. Otherwise, he would have had two more points. Michigan, at this end, has to try to look to get inside a little more. They've settled for the perimeter shot. And that's a challenge one there against good defense. They've got to try to probe either with movement or dribble, dribble penetration, Jim, to get that ball inside some. And that pass was intended for Ola Depot, but it wasn't a clean one. And it's going back to... So Wolverines to inbound with full court pressure coming. Ball break. Big difference on the offensive glass, although Indiana is not converted nearly to the size of that advantage. Burke, we got separation from the ball on Tepo, and he took advantage. Three-point shot puts Michigan back up by one. He is terrific at that off-the-dribble three-point jump shot. Got to crowd him and try to make him not be able to step into that with rhythm. Oscar on the blocks. Sheehy lays it in. Got away from Albrecht. They've got size advantages across the front line, Jim. If you look at Zeller, he's battling with Morgan. Watford's a little taller than Rice the third. And that leaves a smaller guy on Sheehy. It behooves Indiana to look to try to get the ball to those matchup advantages. Stepping in, position it down low. What a shot it is, too, by Morgan. Boy, I like that. Good spacing, good ball movement, and attacking the rim at the end of. Back 
Back and forth we go. Michigan 51-50. Seller. And the lead returns to the Hoosiers. Plus a foul. Excellent penetration here by Glenn Robinson, the third, and then a nice find. Good catch and finish by Morgan. And then right away, here comes Cody Zeller. Morgan kind of gave up there because of the foul trouble and was looking for help. It got there late, and Zeller with a chance now for a three-point play. Oladipo going to get a chance to get some oxygen here. That foul call was on Burke, his second. And Zeller does get the three-point play. Two-point advantage. Remy Abel defending Burke now with Oladipo on the Indiana bench. You see the free throws, not many taken either way. Burke. This is where Michigan can sometimes settle, Jim, with Burke trying to do it himself. Barrel with the jumper gets the soft roll. But Michigan really has to be careful now to let the offense work for him. the way they did on the prior score. We got penetration and a nice find inside. Abel, defending. Burke, driving. Feeds it, corner, Albrecht. What a huge three that is. Michigan. It's Albrecht at the other end. Twice, twice in this half, Trey Burke has penetrated baseline for that corner three. One time for Hardaway Jr., that time for Spike Albrecht. Good job spotting up by the shooter. You have to avail yourself to that penetrator so he can make that pass on time and on target as you look at Mitch McGarry with four fouls returning to the lineup. Michigan now one foul away from being in the penalty. Indiana has only committed three fouls here in this second half, so that could loom large going down the stretch. Very nearly play made by... Hardaway Jr. goes back to Indiana. Pulls to throw it in from the corner. On the floor with three fouls. Sheehy. Second three of the game. So conscious of trying to keep the ball from going inside. Gisela, you back off and you give Sheehy time and space. And again, he had made only seven of his last 20 the prior four games before today. But he is clearly capable. Indiana with 13 points off the bench in this half alone. Corner shot here. And Burke answering to the penetration in the corner three. The help on the weak side has been lacking. 13 for Burke, nine coming after the intermission. So. We've got the under eight timeout. Back and forth we go, Indiana by one. Get all the news and notes from the offseason. Stay dialed in to the latest draft chatter and take an early look at what's in store for the 2013 season. The Big Ten Football Report, tomorrow on BTN. Basketball fans can't contain your excitement for the season? Then the Big Ten Digital Network is your outlet. Get extra games, exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more all on your computer. Plug into the game. Sign up now at video.btn.com. This is going to be fun. 
just a little bigger picture. Indiana pursuing a one seed for next week's selection show, which is about a, exactly one week out. Would love to have that assignment to Indianapolis in that regional. If they lose here today, that suddenly gets put in jeopardy. No question about it, Jim. I agree. A win today in an outright Big Ten regular season championship and a decent showing in next weekend's Big Ten tournament probably puts them right there in the overall number one seed spot along with Duke. I think those are the two teams that have the inside track right now to the overall number one seed looking ahead to next week. And, and again, a win here you would think would put them in that bracket in Indianapolis. Yeah, for sure. Which it would be huge, of course, just down the road from Bloomington. What about Gonzaga overall? On the one line, don't know if they can get to the overall one as McGarry kind of mishandled that one and blew a terrific chance to give Michigan the lead. I think you've got, I think you've got to go to Zeller here against Mazzari, McGarry with the four fouls. That's exactly what you have to do. There's no other strategy for Indiana. If they don't have a quick hit attack and something good early, they have to be intentional about throwing the ball to Zeller against McGarry with the four foul. Michigan, on the other hand, has to try to get opportunities like that going to the basket. That is Burke. Burke and Zeller coming up with huge second halves. Michigan's teammates Gary's teammates rather have to be ready to try to help him if the ball goes in the post to, to Zeller. And it's Hardaway Jr. with six minutes left. Pull up three. McGarry underneath. Second chance up and in. Talk about the size advantage that one of the perimeter guys for Indiana has with the smallest Michigan backcourt. And Sheehy is finding his way to open shots and putbacks inside. He had 10 lead changes in this game. It's Burke. Gives it up to Gary. Zeller defending, wildly put up by McGarry. And this belongs to Indiana. Nice tap in by Sheehy the last time down the floor for Indiana. Right in the middle of your screen, he just works himself to the missed shot, to the weak side, no block out, and an easy tap in. Sheehy has been large in this second half. There you see his numbers. 10 points for him, all in this second stanza. Back to the game and Jim, when he goes well, it really fortifies what Indiana Michael can do to you because they can hit you from a lot of Back different directions when he's doing what he's Jordan capable of, making threes, scoring inside, and creating another matchup advantage for the Hoosiers because of his size and activity. Maybe the best six man in the, in the country. He's one of them. Devontae Gardner at Marquette. Tyrus McGee, Iowa State. Indiana going out without Sheehy and Zeller for this scratch. As Oladipo misses on the three. Hurt. What a move. Off the glass. Strong. Foul on the Hoosiers. So they took Zeller out. Five minutes to go. Right. Take him all the way to that under four. Exactly. That's the point. It's a little dicey, but. No risk, no reward. And perhaps having him be refreshed this next minute or so to serve the Hoosiers well down the stretch. Michigan has not turned it over in the last 18 minutes of this game. Burke, step back, puts up the shot, and gets the soft roll. So hard to guard because he has that pull-up jumper, Jim. It was a three. Burke with 14 in this half. 18 for the game. And the depot now with a three. Lock for 
trying to keep it alive. And it stays with the Hoosiers. Now you got the under four timeout. Trey Burke, along with his Wolverines teammates, getting it done from behind the arc. This finish is going to be something. Watching Big Ten basketball, add to the action with BTN Connect. See all the Twitter activity from around the conference. Get in-game stats and interact with our experts. Join your favorite team with btn.com slash connect. Get socially charged. The BTN Big Ten K is back. On July 27th, BTN brings Big Ten fans together for the summer's hottest event in Chicago. Registration officially opens Thursday, March 14th. Guarantee your spot at btnbig10k.com. We know you love Big Ten sports so much Who ordered the tall? that you want to take them with you. Excuse me? Really? Now you can. With BTN to go, it's the Big Ten network on your phone, tablet, or computer. BTN to go. Take it with you. Think you can't go to college? It was mind-boggling at first. Everyone was talking about going to college, and I was like, oh, I can't do that. The College Board will show you how. How to take the SATs, where to take them. Figure out how to apply for loans. Figure out how to apply for scholarships. I don't think that they realize how much money is out there to help you. I face challenges getting into college. You're going to face challenges, but you can go. You can go. You can go. Go to bigfuture.org for free help from the College Board. Well, it's been a great game here in Ann Arbor. Wolverines, for one day anyway, you can say Ohio State and Michigan State are rooting for them. <laughs> I know that's the case. All these great images brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. You were in this position playing for a Big Ten title on the last game of the regular season. What was it like? It was some kind of game. We were in Bloomington back in 1980 with the outright title on the line you played the round robin at that point both teams 12 and 5 and game went to overtime Jim and we came up short Mike Woodson Isaiah Thomas part of that Indiana championship team of the Big Ten in 80 then did the same thing back in my junior year back in 1982 played Minnesota on the road with a chance to share and came up short so I can certainly understand what these guys are feeling here now. Now it's about execution. Zeller back on the floor. His team down two. You would think that Indiana's going to try to go inside to him. Morgan on the floor defending him. It's been 20 years since Indiana won the Big Ten regular season outright. Chance to do it today. Depot, tough shot, got it to go. To tie the game at 64. That was a tough finish. But the right strategy somewhere inside is what Indiana wanted to do on that possession, and they got it done. Michigan going to play through Burke pretty much the rest of this game, Jim. He's so lethal with that pull-up jumper. Oh, Indiana there for that rebound. Rockford ahead. It was Ola Depot in the end, who again has career numbers in the rebounding category today. Indiana. Big time game. Indiana has a rebound margin of plus 21. But it's been negated because of the outstanding three-point shooting of Michigan. A timeout called by Indiana. I'm green. Anticipation is rising for one of the most competitive weekends of basketball ever. Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Sean Morris tell you what to expect on the Big Ten Tournament Preview, Wednesday at 8 Eastern, only on BTN. Big Ten Men's Gymnastics, only on BTN. This is BTN. Does being over 40 make you feel like half the man you used to be? Do you feel more tired, out of shape, not in the mood like you used to be? You may have reduced testosterone, 
Starting in your early 30s, a man's testosterone declines 1 to 3% every year. By age 50, you may have already lost half of your testosterone. Introducing Ageless Male, a life-changing supplement for men, clinically shown to help increase testosterone levels. And today, we're giving you the opportunity to try it risk-free. What I love about Ageless Male is that, first of all, it's natural. Ageless Male will help you increase muscle mass with strength training, libido, sexual performance, and sexual drive. If you would like to experience what taking Ageless Male can feel like healthy energy and increased performance and more romance when you want it you really need to give ageless mail a try so call or go online now come let's take a look at the capital one cup impact performance seller with 19 10 coming in this half he was scoreless through the first 11 minutes of the game, in fact. Yeah, he picked it up late in that first half, Tim. He's also got eight rebounds. He does have the five turnovers, but you look at those numbers, and you know Indiana will be looking to go to him down the stretch here. Although they got a post up from Oladipo on the last possession. And with 10 seconds to go, Tom Izzo wanted a timeout. Let's see what they call. But it's got to be something, I think, going inside first. Trubisky didn't want to pressure the ball without foul. Doubled up. Has to force it. Put back up by Oladipo to beat the shot clock. Watford had come up short, all air, but Oladipo anticipated it and was there for the putback. Jim, that's one of the reasons he's strongly considered as one of the leading candidates for player of the year in the country. That's why, and that's why he is too. Exactly. Moments of magnitude, both of them. Timeout call. Timeout call by Michigan. Well, you see the foul situation there. Michigan has been parked on six for a few minutes now. If you're Indiana, you have to be thinking inside and give yourself a chance to score in the paint or draw the foul or perhaps both. If you're Michigan, you just want to play good, sound defense. Looks like Michigan's going to back up and just retreat to half court. Indiana with a full shot clock. Got to involve Zeller and Oladipo probably on the same side if you can. All 10 starters on the floor. Two minutes remaining. Hole's got the screen. Long with the three. Well, they got a great look, and that was a call play. And Trey Burke is dangerous in this spot because of his ability to turn the corner and rise up and shoot over bigger players. Morgan put back, yes. He's done that a couple of times today. That's created because Burke gets in the lane when he takes that shot. Multiple players are on him, and that leaves that board free. And a turnover. Penetration. Indiana forces Burke into a tough shot, but when Zeller leads to challenge that shot, Morgan Burke. Jordan Morgan all alone on that backside glass. That's why the penetration is so devastating. Hardaway Jr. to Robinson the third. Hardaway. trying to go too fast here. And he gets low when he drives and sometimes takes away his advantage. Timeout, Michigan. 
We all make bad decisions, like, say, gas station sushi. Cheap is good, and sushi, good, but cheap sushi, not so good. It's like that super low rate on not enough car insurance. Pretty sketchy. And then there are the good decisions, like e-surance. Their coverage counselor tool helps you choose the right coverage for you at a great price, without feeling queasy. That's insurance for the modern world. E-surance. Now back by Allstate. Click or call. Before the ball goes on, expand your basketball knowledge as our experts discuss the matchups to watch, interview coaches and players, and set the scene for a spectacular day of hoops. The Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show, Thursday on BTN. Shop for tickets to Wolverines events and interact via social media at the official home of Michigan Athletics, mgoblue.com, part of the Big Ten Digital Network. timeout will be inbounding and Wolverines can share the conference title for a second straight year with a victory here which would also give Ohio State a piece of the conference title and Michigan State if it beats Northwestern later today would make it a four-way tie in the end. Indiana led by two at 66-64 with 2.15 left and now the Wolverines on a 6 nothing run. They will not guard the inbounds pass. Hardaway has to get it across the timeline. He made a beautiful drive the last time in the foul. By Sheehan with only 57 seconds left. Indiana needs to commit two quick fouls to move Michigan into the bonus to try to prolong this game. There you see the foul situation. Right there. That was number five. Yep. And 57 seconds to go. Hardaway Jr. to inbound. Back to Burr. Hold on depot. There's the other foul. So you said two quick ones. Now down to 53 seconds. Second on Ola Depot. That's just the second team. So now the next foul, if there's not a quick turnover, will send Michigan to the line. A good free throw shooting team. I'd like to try if you're Indiana to force it out of the hands of Burt or Stauskas and see if somebody else could catch it. Up ahead, Robinson, the third is fouled by Watford. Take a look. Breakaway. an effort there well that's a tough that was really close hey you like a look at the left you got a push and a rake Michigan fans wanted a little, yeah, little more they out of that they wanted the intentional and it certainly looked like it could have warranted the intentional and the officials are going to take a look at it yeah, another look he got a grab right there and this is a clear path foul but that rules not in play Let's take a look. I think I think that's got to be an intentional. I think that's got to be an intentional foul. He raked him. He pushed him from the back. Yeah. I think that's got to be an intentional foul coming from behind that way. Well, the three officials just looked at that whole replay sequence and we're having a discussion about it. So. all see it the same way. Oh, they're actually having a conference in it. We'll get the explanation here. Because he made a pretty good play on the ball. In the Take a look right here. Glenn Robinson the third going to break away. No contact there. 
And in the reach, he was actually making a terrific effort to try to get to a play on the ball, and the officials gave him the benefit of the doubt there. He's so, reaching in, he's got his arm on him, and he does try to make a play on the ball. So. Just a two-shot situation. Ooh, and the first one gets away from him. And his dad, that's Glenn an Robinson. That's an agonizing feeling because you can't do anything to help your youngster out there. Second one makes it a five-point game. Replacing Nick Stauskas. Plenty of time here, Jim. You don't need a three. You need a good, quick score. A good, quick score is what you need. Doesn't have to be a three. So driving to the basket. Puts it back up and in. Well done. One second difference between game and shot clock. You don't force a turnover, you got to foul immediately. And they do. They're going to put Hardaway Jr. on the line. The seller basket ends a 7 nothing run. Correction, Indiana foul on number 11, Yogi Ferrell. And Tim Hardaway That's senior his now. Teammate. I don't know if you can relate to this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kids out here Tim, Tim competing Jr. and find themselves in these moments. You'd like to see him come through and life steal. You don't need a three if you're Indiana. You just need something quick and good. With 30 seconds. Down to Zeller. Wow, almost. Wow. Almost was going to have a chance at the three point play. Boy, that's exactly what you don't want if you're Michigan. Michigan foul. It's called on Morgan, his third. Because you foul, and now you, get a, you, you stop the clock. And you give him a chance to score. Shots coming for Cody Zeller. Back in the game, no free. Stauskas and McGarry in for Michigan. Sheehy for Indiana. Really important for Zeller to be able to knock this one down so it allows you to press and maybe force a turnover, but it also gives you a one point deficit so you can foul right away and at worst be down three. Got it. 71 70. And they fouled Burke. Burke wanted that ball desperately that time. The last couple of times he didn't get his hands on it. He wants to step up and knock these free throws down. Indiana foul on that. He's a 79% free throw shooter. And he'll be shooting a one and one. Back in the game now for your Wolverines number one. And he's probably been a little better than that in the clutch in these kinds of situations. And stepping to the line out of the shoot. One on one for your Wolverines. Even if he makes them both, still plenty of time to where Indiana doesn't have to go for the three, Jim. A lot of time on the clock here. Again, one and one. Oh, Indiana now. With a trip to take the lead back. You got to go fairly soon if you're Indiana and you want to do something inside. Farrell with 18. Well, I think they should be going earlier. Zeller oh, inside, puts yeah. it up, and Indiana's back in front with 13 seconds. Six unanswered by the Hoosiers. Ten seconds to go. Will Indiana win it out right, or will Michigan gain a tie? Burke inside, long put back, rolls off the rim, tapped out to Zeller, and the Hoosiers, the Hoosiers win it out right. Cannot believe how close that came to falling in. It hung on the rim. Wow. Morgan with the putback. And now everyone holding their breath. And Indiana, for the first time since 1993, takes the Big Ten title outright. The last six points of the game to Indiana. And Zeller able to catch it and get an easy look at it, but missed free throws by Michigan, Jim. And look how close this ball came to going in on the tap in by Jordan Morgan. One more revolution to the right 
and is in the hole and Michigan celebrating. Michigan had those two one and ones in the last minute, missing both front ends. And Jim, you wonder sometimes when you take your team off of the foul line in that situation, is it disconcerting to the shooter?